Compassionate Arts in Action has promoted peace, justice, and a sustainable future through the arts for six years. Our co-founder, Felicia Faylove Lene Williams, helped make a lot of things happen, including the school walkout at the Santa Monica City Hall a few years ago, where we participated with the Post for Peace and Justice, M. Compassionate California, M. Pico Youth and Family Health Center. This is one of the posts from our LA youth activities because we believe in looking at the roots of issues. And we work with partnership with many organizations, including Post for Peace and Justice in Atlanta. The first thing you might notice about our post, maybe not, is that two sides of our post are dedicated to school shootings and gun violence in education. And the other two are focused on gun violence everywhere, mass shootings, um, specifically in the USA. Um, so, the biggest thing, a lot of us went to the March for Our Lives um, in Washington, D.C. So, this is something that's very passionate, or something that's very passionate about. So, one of the slogans, slogans I guess, was Never Again. And that was something really big that we wanted to put on there. Um, and actually, the little people at the top are the March for Our Lives people. Um, and uh, we graduated from a violent and drastic bottom to a so our artwork is designed to give hope while also educating about issues we care about. Just last week, we worked in Sacramento with Chill Sacramento and the Peace Pole Garden Project. We, for the first time, were able to certify teaching artists and we had compassionate arts art teachers come and teach them. Alec Jones is one of these new compassionate artists for the Post for Peace and Justice and for Chill Sacramento. So tell me, what would um, you like people to know about the post you worked on? The, I mean, what would, what would be important to you that people get? Uh, for me, the most important aspect of my post is that I do want the conversation to advance beyond um, mere phrases or, or, or things that we've been saying over and over again. Um, it's not that it's time to start a new conversation, but it's time to make sure that we are addressing issues directly and challenging those in authority to think about their actions, no matter who they're harming, um, and make sure that all of their actions that they take all the time are just and are supporting the community. Um, so when you see my post, I hope that you understand that I am trying to directly inform and have a conversation. And your post is beautiful and it's very well done, really. I love the historical perspective. So can you talk a little bit about why you chose to do a historical perspective on AB 392? Right, so with AB 392, from what I get from it is that it is a bill to hold police accountable or to have them think about the actions and the outcome uh, in the moments that they are you know, performing their duties. Uh, the bill makes sure that police are using de-escalating techniques. So when it comes to the history and you look at what that bill, uh, why it was created, you, and you look at the police force and we, what I've shown or what I've seen through creating the post is that throughout our history in this country, policing has been overblown completely. Um, how it's been used has been to generate funds for those in power and to hold back uh, minority communities and communities of color and keep a certain class level in this country. Uh, so the history is to inform people from the beginning, there was an unnecessary reason to have certain types of police. Uh, and then as time has gone on, policing has only ratcheted up to a more militar militarized form. And that is completely unnecessary. Um, the citizens of this country can survive and live in peace and happiness. And the police can be there within peace and happiness instead of militarized units on our streets. These artworks are gonna be at the Crocker Museum. They'll show in public places. They act as talking sticks to help teachers, community leaders, and youth learn and grow.